Have you ever been worried that you might wake up and have trouble breathing because one of your lungs has turned into a third kidney? <laughs> or maybe you're sitting here and it feels like you're having a little trouble digesting your lunch still and it's because your pancreas has decided to become a spleen? <laughs> I'm sure none of you have had these worries until maybe right now, but you shouldn't because there are no documented medical cases of such a thing ever occurring. It just doesn't ever happen and it can't happen. Can it? Please allow me to introduce to you all the nematode worm Cenorheptitis elegans, or C. elegans for short. On the left here, you can see a typical worm. Its head is up at the top. Uh, it's only about one millimeter in length, and we've used genetic engineering to express a fluorescently tagged protein so that their gut glows blue. Now, recently we've discovered something unusual in C. elegans. When you turn on one particular gene, as was done in this experimental worm, it causes part of the gonad to, instead of being a uterus, to stop being a uterus and instead turn into a second gut. As you can see in this enlarged region clearly with the second smaller blue tube parallel to the normal one. Now I can guess what you might be thinking. What? That's really weird. Why would this organ do that? To which I can say to you, I don't know yet, but that is exactly what my research has aimed to find out. Understanding this unique phenomenon has the potential to change the way we think about how tissues and organs are formed, which could help us figure out what goes wrong during development, resulting in birth defects, and maybe we could get the same process to work in mammals. Maybe we could turn any tissue into anything else we want. Imagine, your appendix could be used as a replacement after a tracheotomy. You could donate a piece of your kidney to yourself to perfectly repair uh, your liver, and vice versa, with no rejection and no waiting. Now, first off, what do you even call something like this? Well. We've come up with a term for it, and I'll warn you, it's a bit technical, but I'm going to give it to you anyways. Transorganogenesis. It's a mouthful, so break it down. First, you have the word organ. So far, so good. Then you have the word organogenesis, which is often used in developmental biology and refers to the process of building an organ. And now we have the Latin prefix trans, meaning across. And there you have it. Transorganogenesis, the changing of one organ into another. And a brand new seven syllable word, which you might not hear until next year's Grad Slam, and maybe in 2040, when your doctor tells you about a new treatment, when you start feel like you're having those breathing problems. Thank you.